Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 26, 2022, around 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a new tropical cyclone in the East Pacific Basin and a look at when the Atlantic Basin will start to heat up. Could we be dealing with worse storms this year? But let's go ahead and jump straight into that. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet across the tropical Atlantic for now. We do have this pretty decent tropical wave, actually, that is southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands at this point. So will be moving generally westward over the next couple of days, but no development is expected due to the very hostile conditions expected across the Atlantic Basin for now. And that will generally remain in place through about the first week or two of August when things begin to change across the area. Real quickly, let's take a look at some of the viewer submitted weather forecasts uh, request for today's uh, forecast video. So taking a look at Houston, Texas, first of all, we have a temperature of 97 today with a low of 79, 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon, 0% chance in the evening. Uh, winds do pick up in the evening around Houston to about uh, 15 miles per hour, about 15 to 20 miles per hour or so. And then another submitted request from Hollywood, Florida today, 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms, 88 degrees east wind, about 17 miles per hour. Uh, for the evening forecast, we're looking at about a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly before about 9 p.m. Temp low temperature of 79, east wind about uh, 15, 14 to about 15 miles per hour there as well. All right. Now, taking a look at the East Pacific tropics, we do have Tropical Storm Frank, a newly designated tropical storm in the East Pacific Basin. This is the visible satellite image today. We notice that the overall storm is not really well organized. This low-level circulation over here, some thunderstorms trying to go up near the center of circulation there. But overall, most of the convection is pretty weighted off towards the west, as we'd expect, because we do have some shear that's being impinged on the system right now. If we look at the current NHC forecast, this is expected to remain a tropical storm for the next couple of days before coming a hurricane there on Friday. This is about 8 a.m. Friday morning. This becomes a hurricane, 65 knots. Uh, the peak forecast is about 90 miles per hour, so a high-end Category 1 hurricane as this moves off towards the northwest here. Again, this is not expected to really be anything uh, for any landmass, so there is no land concern at all for the Baja or for any portions of Mexico at this given time, so that is certainly some good news. Now, focusing on what to expect for the rest of the Atlantic Basin, well, let's go ahead and look at all of that, shall we? Uh, so we'll take a look here at some of the sea surface temperature profiles. Again, uh, this is the sea surface temperature anomalies uh, for uh, yesterday to so July 25th. We noticed that right now we still have a La Nina event occurring out here. The deep tropics have certainly, or the equatorial waters rather, uh, have certainly warmed up, especially in the Nino uh, 1 and 2 regions. But out here in the Nino 3-4 region, which is this area right and through about here, we still have water temperatures that are generally within that La Nina territory. But we have seen some warming because we've had a pretty decent westerly wind burst that has caused some upwelling across this area. But we'll be right back into that phase where we get a easterly wind burst causing more downwelling and, or I'm sorry, upwelling and causing more substantial uh, cooler anomalies to return. And then in the Atlantic Basin, we are starting to see some changes. First of all, the subtropics as a whole generally remain cooler than average. But then we have this warming of the deep tropics, kind of that AMO look that's kind of a positive phase one AMO, but it's, it's kind of different. You notice that there's kind of two phases. There's the phase two here, basically, and then there's the phase one. It is kind of very difficult here. To, it's kind of a mixed bag of different things that we're kind of seeing in the, in the tropical Atlantic right now. But overall, the signs are pointing generally for favorability in the Atlantic. And then we do even have the potential for an Atlantic Nina to be developing, which does help out uh, increase the potential for tropical cyclones, uh, I do believe, in the tropical regions. So that will be something to kind of keep in mind as we progress throughout the next couple of weeks. Now, focusing on when storms are going to begin to pick up across the Atlantic Basin, let's go ahead and look at the GFS forecast. This is the 60 run valid for 8 a.m. this morning. Again, so what we're looking at here is the 850 millibar vorticity. We'll just take a real quick look at this. We notice that there's not really much happening in the deep tropics according to the GFS forecast. Again, generally speaking, we have these tropical waves, and this goes out all the way till August 11th. We have these tropical waves that come off. They dissipate because of the very hostile conditions out there. 
But once again, as I said in yesterday's video, there's a lot more that, that you know, kind of meets the road to this basically uh, than just what we're seeing on the surface. So we actually have to look at how the overall conditions are expected to evolve. So let's look at the European ensembles and we'll look here. This is the zero Z run. So this is a valid, uh, we'll move this out valid for 8 a.m. this morning. We notice that again, here's that decent tropical wave kind of right in here. Now, what we're going to be kind of monitoring is we're looking at the precipital water content. So we're looking at departures from average, whether we have more moisture or less moisture in the atmosphere. Now, right now we have some pretty good moisture content that's over the, you know, Africa right now, and that's moved off into the Atlantic basin. And this is because we've had some of these tropical waves come off that's helped to kind of see the environment uh, for a little bit more moisture that is expected to be very short lived and not really prevalent. Okay. Now, we notice that we do have some uh, dry air that ends up coming in again. And in the first couple of days of August, we have this dry air spout that kind of comes in and just completely kills off the Atlantic Basin. Now, again, this is to be expected. Now, we're talking about August 2nd, and typically the really the big ramp up begins on August 20th because our peak is September 10th. Now, with La Nina based seasons too, it is potentially possible to have a backloaded season. We'll talk about that in a minute. So keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. Now, if we kind of look forward here in time, we also notice that eventually from about August 7th through about August 10th, we have more moisture that is down here in the deep tropics spanning a much greater area than what we have right now. Because if we go back we notice that again, these uh, green anomalies here, these more moisture doesn't extend that far before we get into all the browns out here. So all the dry air. But we noticed that by the end of the forecast period here on the Euro, we have generally more moisture across the entire deep tropics here, which ends up leaving uh, a pretty profound remark. And if we actually look at what the zonal wind anomalies are doing at this time, we have a very strong uh, westerly wind event in the low levels down here. So this is looking at uh, a lot of westerly winds helping to kick off um, potentially that West African monsoon. And that basically induces more moisture over Africa. It weakens the trade winds significantly. So it allows pretty substantial warming across the deep tropics where it's you know mattered the most. And we also have induced favorability from, we have cyclonic, generally naturally generating cyclonic winds uh, in the low and mid levels from all this westerly wind at the surface. And if we jump up to the upper levels, we have pretty anomalous easterly wind across the area, which allows for that cyclonic generation, pretty favorable all the way uh, until you get to the island chain here. Now, one of the problems, of course, you know, could see it, kind of this upper level disturbance here, but generally speaking, most of the basin looks to be pretty favorable once we get to about August 10th or so. Now, the one thing I have seen is that, you know, the GFS forecast has kind of been thrown out there quite substantially. If we look at what the GFS ensembles are actually showing at this time, we'll jump to the 200 millibar wind at the end of the forecast here. We notice that it is pretty favorable in the east part of the Atlantic, but then we have some pretty strong upper level winds cutting across the deep tropics. Now, this is actually a result of how directly a result of how it translates in the propagation dynamics of the Madden-Julian oscillation and those convectively coupled Kelvin waves. And if we actually look at the P-Watt anomalies, again, this kind of gives you a sense of, oh my God, dry Atlantic, but this isn't necessarily the case. And again, I've, I've kind of seen some of that thrown out there that, you know, 2013 repeat, it, it ain't happening. I'll be kind of the first to tell you right now that I really do not see a 2013 repeat in sight. So that is certainly some news. You know, the season's still going to be active. And, and in La Nina-based seasons, you can oftentimes have backloaded seasons where we have, you know, August is dead. And then September, October, and even parts of November, like we saw in 2020, were just backloaded and had crazy amounts of storms going. So it is something, something to kind of keep in mind. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.